This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is my full review of the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 3. I already did a first look at both the Flip 3 and the Fold 3, so this is the individualized treatment now after I've had about mm, 10 days to play with and use the phone heavily. And if you don't know already, this is the one with the folding screen, which folds, and because it's supposed to be a 30% stronger inner display, hopefully won't do what my shirt shows here. We are going to look at it now. So for those of you who are, haven't already watched some of the first looks that are out there in, and even reviews and you want the basics, this is a 6.7 inch flexible display folding Android phone from Samsung running Android 11 with their One UI 3.1. So the inner display is a little bit narrower than your average already narrow, granted, smartphone, but uh, pretty much the screen size is like having a Galaxy S21 Plus, but something that folds and fits in your pocket. And honestly, compared to say something like the iPhone 12 Pro, not Pro Max, just the 12 Pro, it looks hugely tall, yet it's easier to fit in your pocket. And that's the point with the folding phones is the fact that we all like big screens now like here's a picture of what the iPhone looked back in the bad old days tiny little thing right now nobody wants a tiny screen anymore do they they want something big but as they get bigger and bigger they're more of a burden to carry around either you sit down and you get a pocket vasectomy when it pokes you or you put it in your back pocket and you crack it or it keeps flopping and jumping out of pockets all of those things so that's why this phone exists for some of you that will be exciting enough along with the fact that this is exciting new technology ultra-thin ultra glass, a folding, flexible display. It's kind of cool stuff. And phones have looked pretty much the same for a decade now, right? But I understand there's some of you out there who still would rather just pay for top specs. You're fine with the size of your phone. You don't need it to fold and all that sort of thing. So this is for those of you who are still fold curious or maybe even fold eager. Because after all, this is Samsung's third attempt. Though I would say when it comes to the Flip, it's sort of more like the second. There was the original Galaxy Z Flip. Then not so long after as they came out with the Galaxy Z Flip 5G, which is really the same phone. They just added a 5G radio. There really weren't other changes at that point, right? So this is the first one that, where they do a big redesign. And much like going from the fold to the fold two, where there were a lot of changes, things that people wanted to see. That's what has happened with the Z Flip 3. What are those things? First off, there is that IPX8 water resistance. So yeah, you could even in theory carefully wash it off with clean, clear water. That means it's not guaranteed against Coca-Cola or salt water and all that sort of thing. But if it's raining out, you don't have to like, oh my precious little folding phone. I have to hide it. You don't have to worry about that anymore. If you want to give it kind of a good cleaning because you're worried about germs these days, like we all are, you can do that. So that's pretty important stuff. It's also the least expensive folding phone Samsung, I think, as far as I know, anybody has made $999. So the price dropped $200 more if you consider what the original Z Flip cost. Yeah? So now that it's the price of a list price of an S21 plus, it's it's in your flagship average price range, which some flagships, obviously like the S21 Ultra and the iPhone 12 Pro Max and all that, going even higher. So the price isn't as horrible as it used to be, is it? Then there's the fact that the outer display got larger. Before it was that narrow little Band-Aid strip, not even as tall as a Band-Aid, which was just about useless. Now I understand they needed room to fit the battery in there because there's actually a battery section in each half and the faster CPU, like the Moto Razor has a bigger outer display still to this day, but they also use a slower CPU that doesn't need as much cooling. So anyway, I, I'm pretty happy with the way Samsung's rolling with that. I'd rather have a more powerful flagshipy level phone. But now you have a 1.9 inch display that's pretty high resolution and it's OLED and it's quite bright in itself. So it's enough to actually read things on the screen and you can swipe through. There's like a choice of six widgets you can have. You can see your notifications. Obviously you can see the time. And yes, as ever with the flip, you can actually take and end calls without even opening the phone. You can open to answer and flip it shut to end a phone call, but you can also just leave it on the desk and on speakerphone mode, take your calls. Now, it, a lot of the user interface with that outer display reminds me of the Galaxy Watch 3 and 4, which isn't really a bad thing. That's a pretty good user interface. A couple of places where it falls a little bit short is if I get a text message, I can't actually even use a canned reply. I have to open the phone. So gee, even with the watch, I get a can reply option. You know what I mean? And for some of the notifications, like if you have news apps installed and all that sort of thing, you can see the headline, but you can't tap it and see 
the first couple of sentences or anything like that. So I would like to see it in the future, but granted, it's not a big display. Someday, maybe we'll see one as big as what the Razer has on the outside. By the way, if you swipe down on the outer display, you can control the volume and also the brightness. It's pretty bright by default. We've talked about the outer display, which is one of the big changes. Let's talk about the inner display. Samsung said that the Fold got 80% tougher and the Flip got 30% tougher. As far as I know, when it comes to the center seam cracking thing happening to some people, that happened more on the Fold. Bigger display, more chance for breakage. Anyway, I think most of what they're talking about there is the top layer, which is the screen protector, which is now a PET, a type of plastic, that's harder and more durable. So the fingernail thing that you used to see, fingernail marks that just didn't go away, that feeling of sponginess is gone. It feels a lot more like glass than ever. So I haven't gotten any marks on it so far, but the morally, I didn't get a lot of marks on my Z Flip, and I actually own the Z Flip and the Fold and the Fold too. Uh, what is great though is it's a lot more fingerprint resistant. The old ones were just gross. I mean, ew. You, you know, you could hardly see the screen because it would hold on to so much, and then those weren't even water resistant, so you couldn't clean them really great. So that problem is gone here. Resolution is no different from previous flips, and it's a full HD plus resolution display. is perfectly adequate for the size. And Samsung is using a new, brighter, more power efficient OLED, so it is a bit brighter than it was before. It's very easy to see it outdoors now. Mostly before, it wasn't about the brightness. It was the fingerprint smear you could never get rid of, but it looks good. It's very vibrant. It's very colorful. It's not like you're slumming it by not going with an S21 Plus or Ultra in terms of screen quality. This is a nice looking screen. By the way, it has always on display and by default with the auto brightness active for that, I find it runs too bright, which could affect your battery life, which is a topic we will talk about later. Another improvement, you see there really are a lot of changes here, is we have 120 hertz refresh for that display. So, you know, once you get used to 120 hertz, it really isn't fun to go to 60 hertz again. Now, for battery life reasons, if you wish to, you can set it to 60 hertz or leave it at the adaptive refresh, higher refresh rate. Another improvement is stereo speakers. Instead of the fairly meek mono speaker the flips used to have, now we have stereo. And my God, it's loud. You can hear the notifications, even with the notification volume set at like 30% if you're two rooms away. It's uh, effective. And it's not bad quality either. So if you're using it for watching videos, well, yeah, it's fine. It's good. Good job, Samsung. Inside, we have the Snapdragon 888, which is currently the top of the line processor with 5G, low, mid, millimeter wave, you name it, you've got it all for 5G. You can get it from all the major carriers or you can get it unlocked if you want as well. We have eight gigs of RAM, which is fine. It's, it's reasonable. It's not the highest we've seen in a flagship, but it's good. And we have your choice of 128 or 256 gigs of UFS 3.1 fast internal storage, no micro SD card slot. For your power users, something you won't be thrilled with perhaps is there is no Samsung DeX support. So for those of you who like to plug in a monitor and go with that kind of desktop-y experience, the Fold 3 has that, the Flip doesn't. I suspect for thermal reasons. This is a very thin, very light phone. I, oh, it's, it's really amazing actually how thin it is. So it's probably why. And the Fold 3 does have it if you really need that and you really need bendy phones in addition. Now, it doesn't even support display out. I plugged in USB-C monitors. I tried with docks, so no. You can do wireless display out, so you can cast to your TV and all that sort of thing, but no wired display output. The Flip 3 has Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.1 LE, NFC, and well, of course, a GPS. And yes, you can use Samsung Pay with the phone closed. I know some people had problems with it early on, reviewers, and maybe even some of you lucky people in Europe who got the phone super early, but that's because it needed some updates for the software. So that's cool. One new thing about the hinge design is, and by the way, now it has armor aluminum, which is supposed to be stronger than 7000 series aluminum, which is already pretty tough and Apple often uses, and less heavy than stainless steel. Uh, we have the straight sides. It's so much easier to hold than the slippery bar of soap design of the previous one. I'm pretty thrilled with that. Uh, some people say that it walks on their desk when it's closed. Maybe all my test desks and tables are very level. I haven't had slide around, but that's a possibility. You can get cases. We have two Samsung first party cases as you can see, one with a ring, one with a kind of strappy thing. And those are silicone and they're fairly thick and fairly protective. Of course, they might take a little the flex when you open and close your phone. People might not figure it out quite a way. You got to flip, but that's okay, folks. Protect your phone if you need to. And obviously there's skins if you just want to keep it really thin and light, which is me. Hello. Yeah. Also that hinge 
is improved insofar as now there are more angles you can keep it open at, almost any angle, in fact. So I know some people want to keep it tipped almost all the way back and it would keep flipping all the way open automatically. It won't do that anymore. So that's great. And for those of you who like to use it to take selfies, to prop it on the table using a tripod mode, that sort of thing, you've got that. Cameras on this, well, you know, if cameras are really important to you, getting the best camera, probably not the phone for you because obviously the S21 Ultra, the iPhone 12 Pro Max, and some other phones on the market can do better. This basically has the S20 family of cameras yet again. They didn't revise anything other than improving the software over time. Like you get director's cut here now, which I don't think came out until the S21 series. So you have a main camera, which is 12 megapixel. You have an ultra wide camera, also 12 megapixel, and they're very competent. They take very nice pictures in Samsung as usual. Sometimes a little over sharpening, a little bit of extra saturation, but nothing over the top. Um, honestly, they're quite nice, but if you want the best you can get or telephoto like me, I really admit I do like telephoto. Well, then you're going to have to look at a phone that does actually have a telephoto lens. This one does digital zoom and is pretty competent at two to three X, but you're not going to want to push it to 10 X like you would in S21 ultra. The night mode on this is actually pretty solid. Again, did you ever hear anybody say the Galaxy S20 family of phones had sucky cameras? No, not really, because they're pretty good. It's just, there's no way to fit something more in a phone this small. And then the Fold gets the same cameras, but it adds the telephoto lens on board. So it gets one extra in case you're trying to figure out which phone you should get based on that. So you're not going to get any better quality with the Fold 3. You'll just get a telephoto lens added on. It does have a few neat features like the zoom in mic. You can shoot in RAW and HEVC format if you want to, up to 10x digital zoom. So you've got all the software bells and whistles you would expect. So let's talk battery life. Yeah, 3300 million battery is not that big, is it? So the Snapdragon 888 is a little bit more power efficient at times. They're using a more power efficient OLED display, but obviously this thing is not going to be the Energizer Bunny either. Uh, for me, it's running longer than the original Z Flip did, probably because of those improvements. Uh, if you're a moderate to light user, you should make it through the day. That is by, say you start at 7 a.m., you're done by 10 p.m., you're ready to put on a charger, you should have about 15, 20% left. If you're a heavier user, you may, well not may, you will need to top it up sometime during the day if you have a wireless charger by your desk or wherever you are, a, a wired charger, but it's, it's about four hours of screen on time, but it does depend on what you do with it. If you're using something that really sucks the power quick, like a game, you will get less and four hours of screen on time, obviously. But on average, that's what I'm getting on Wi-Fi, which is typically more power efficient than 5G. If you spend your day without Wi-Fi coverage, expect perhaps a bit lower on the run times. Not a huge amount, maybe 20, 30 minutes lower. It does have wireless power share, which means it can charge buds or a Galaxy Watch, that sort of thing. Obviously, that's going to eat into your battery too. Speaking of wireless charging, it does support wireless charging at 10 watts, so it's not particularly fast by any means. And wired charging is 15 watts, so the Pixel 5a that we just reviewed, that has an 18 watt charger, so it's just a little bit less than that. So it takes about an hour and a half to charge the phone from 10% to full. It tops up the first half, the first 50%, much quicker, which is true of all phones for thermal reasons mostly. And because flagship phones don't get chargers anymore, according to Samsung and Apple, there is no charger in the box. So you're going to have to source your own if you don't already have one. So why should you get a flip? Well, like I said, mostly because it's really cool and phones have been staying the same forever. And now at $999, it's not more than your average S21 plus kind of phone or your basic iPhone 12 Pro, right? Uh, but there's also the fact that I've been doing this for a long time, reviewing phones back when, hey, here's a flip phone, a Motorola flip phone, right? So back when that was about as foldy as you got. Now, I know a lot of you watching this were not even alive when these flip phones were a thing. Also, in the United States, people love flip phones, not so much in Europe. But So I'm not loving it because it reminds me of this so much. But I know for some of you, it might or it might remind you of your dad's or your mom's phone that you never got a chance to use. But it's about the way technology is moving forward and making things happen that weren't possible before. This is an HTC Universal. This is probably about 14 years old. A keyboard, a clamshell design, a teeny little display. This was a Windows mobile phone, right? But at the time, this was like having an office in your pocket. We just see these kind of leap forward in technology, and obviously this became Android QWERTY phones in the future, and then we moved on to the fact that we could have really good on-screen keyboards and bigger screen phones. So 
now we're at the point where you can either get a tablet that fits in your pocket with the Fold 3 or a big screen phone that fits in definitely any pocket and easily in your hand with the Z Flip 3. So those are kind of neat things that change the way you use a phone again and your expectations of a phone. You can get your big screen. You can find ways to carry it more easily again. And that's progress. Is it going to break? I don't know, folks. You know, I, I actually bought one, so I'm certainly hoping not. We know that some of them did crack right in the center where the fold is. And yes, you can still see that crease. So for those of you who have that OCD thing and you can't take it, it's there. For me, it just disappears. I'm hoping that it will be more sturdy, especially because Samsung is now giving you your first year of Samsung Galaxy Care Plus free. 249 deductible on that one though, so keep that in mind. But that's only if you do it, whoopsie. If you forget and leave it on the roof of your car and take off and then go, oh no, and you go get your phone and say, mm, well, I just made a mess there. If it breaks because of their design issues or any problem like that in the first year, obviously they cover it without any deductible, but it is something to keep in mind. You have to have a tolerance for that sort of risk. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and hit the notification bell so you know about them. And yes, the Fold 3 review is coming next.